74,000 years ago, the Toba supervolcano erupted with the force of a million atomic bombs, plunging the world into a volcanic winter. For years, scientists believed this event pushed humanity to the brink of extinction, but new evidence is rewriting that story. On the island of Sumatra in modern-day Indonesia lies Lake Toba, a serene and beautiful caldera. But this peaceful landscape hides a history of unimaginable violence. It is the site of one of the largest volcanic eruptions in Earth's history. When Toba blew its top 74,000 years ago, it ejected nearly 3,000 cubic kilometers of rock and ash into the atmosphere, an event that dwarfed any eruption in recorded history. This was not just an eruption, it was a planet-altering cataclysm. The stakes of understanding what happened next are nothing less than understanding a pivotal moment in our own species' survival. Did this single event nearly wipe us out, reducing our ancestors to a tiny, fragile population? Or was it a crucible that forged our resilience and adaptability, ultimately helping to make us who we are today? The immediate aftermath of the eruption would have been apocalyptic. The sheer volume of sulfur dioxide and ash blasted into the stratosphere would have formed a thick veil, blocking out sunlight and causing global temperatures to plummet by as much as 15 degrees Celsius. This triggered a volcanic winter that may have lasted for a decade, followed by a thousand-year-long cooling period. The sensation would have been one of perpetual twilight, a cold, gray world where the sun was a dim ghost in the sky. The air would have been thick with the acrid smell of sulfur, and a fine layer of volcanic ash would have coated every surface across thousands of miles. Based on this climate modeling, in 1998, the anthropologist Stanley Ambrose proposed a dramatic hypothesis, the Toba Catastrophe Theory. He argued that this sudden, brutal climate shift caused a mass die-off of plants and animals, leading to a catastrophic collapse of the global ecosystem. For the small populations of early modern humans living at the time, this would have meant widespread famine. Ambrose connected this environmental collapse to genetic evidence. Studies of modern human DNA suggest that at some point in our deep past, our species went through a genetic bottleneck. The theory is that our population was reduced to as few as 1,000 to 10,000 breeding pairs. Ambrose proposed that the Toba eruption was the event that caused this bottleneck, nearly driving our species to extinction. For years, this was a powerful and widely accepted narrative. It was a story of a near miss, a moment when humanity almost didn't make it. But what if the story was wrong? What if the evidence for survival was simply buried, waiting to be found? The first major challenge to the catastrophe theory came from archaeologists working in India. They found layers of Toba ash at their sites, but crucially, they also found sophisticated stone tools directly above and below the ash layer. This suggested that human populations were present in the region both before and after the eruption. It was a crack in the foundation of the bottleneck theory, but it wasn't definitive proof of survival. The most compelling evidence has emerged more recently from a site in Ethiopia called Shinfa Matema 1. There, a team of archaeologists found human artifacts buried alongside a microscopic shard of volcanic glass. The chemical fingerprint of that glass was a perfect match for the Toba eruption, it was the smoking gun proving that people were living in this exact spot, right as the ash was falling. The feeling of that discovery must have been breathtaking. Holding a tiny piece of a supervol eruption from the other side of the world, found next to a tool made by a human hand, is a direct, tangible link to a moment of planetary crisis. But the Shinfa Matema site told a deeper story. By analyzing the animal bones and artifacts, the researchers could see how these ancient people adapted to the rapidly changing environment. As the Toba-induced drought altered the landscape and shrank the rivers, these survivors changed their diet. 
they began to rely more heavily on fish, a resource that was more resilient to the climate shift. They also adapted their technology. The researchers found the earliest known evidence of archery, small, pointed stone projectiles that were likely used as arrowheads. This was a major technological leap, allowing them to hunt a wider range of animals more effectively. This wasn't a story of a desperate, dying population. It was a story of incredible behavioral flexibility and innovation. Faced with a crisis, these humans didn't just endure, they adapted, invented, and thrived. The evidence from Africa and India directly challenges the global catastrophe narrative. While the Toba eruption was undeniably a massive environmental shock, its impact on human population seems to have been regional, not global. Some groups may have suffered, but others, particularly in Africa, demonstrated a remarkable resilience that allowed them to weather the storm. This revised story of the Toba event reframes it from a near extinction event to a critical test. The challenges posed by the volcanic winter may have acted as a powerful selective pressure, favoring the most adaptable and innovative human groups. It may have been the very crucible that spurred the development of the complex cognitive skills that allowed our species to later expand out of Africa and colonize the entire planet. So, did Toba nearly wipe us out, or did it help make us stronger? The answer appears to be the latter. It was a profound test of our species' ability to survive, a test that our ancestors passed with ingenuity and resilience, ensuring that their descendants, us, would one day inherit the Earth. If you find mysteries like this compelling, consider following as we continue to investigate the enigmas of the past.